All right, great. So um, I think we can get started. I, I'll do an introduction of myself. I'll ask the other folks from the GitLab Developer Evangelist team to introduce themselves. Then I'll get into uh, one of the questions that was pre-submitted. And then if folks who are on the call want to ask questions, we'd love for you to verbalize them. If not, we'll just keep going with the pre-submitted um, questions until other folks um, add theirs you know, verbally or in the chat. Um, so first of all, thanks everyone so much for being here today. Um, we're really excited to be hosting this AMA. This is the first time we've done this. Um, so it's kind of an experiment for us, but um, we think it's a really great way for us to just connect with our community and um, find out you know, what people are thinking about and hopefully help people solve some problems or, or just get the information that they need. Um, to start the introductions, I'm John. I manage the developer evangelism team at GitLab. Um, I also, or previously, and, and I'm still running our GitLab meetups and GitLab Heroes program, although we're trying to, to fill that role um, so that I can focus more on the team management. Um, and I have uh, with me today um, my teammates, Brendan, Abu Bakr, and Michael. So, Brendan, why don't you go next um, and introduce yourself and then hand it off to one of the other folks? Sure, sure. Thanks, John. Um, my name is Brandon O'Leary, formerly known as John Coglin. Uh, uh, developer evangelist at GitLab. Uh, I've been at GitLab since October of 2017, which is a very long time in startup years. Um, I've had a number of roles at GitLab. I helped uh, start our professional services organization here. Uh, I then also ran product for our Verify stage uh, for a time and then finally um, got converted by uh, our friend Priyanka, who's now GM of uh, the CNCF to this role. Um, and yeah, so really excited to talk to everybody. And next up, I'd like uh, Abu Bakar to introduce himself, please. Thank you, Brendan. Uh, I'm Abu Bakar Siddi Kango. Uh, I joined GitLab in July 2016 uh, as a junior support engineer, then transitioned to an intermediate support engineer before uh, transitioning to the developer evangelism program manager role uh, in January 2020. Mm, yeah, that's basically about me, uh, Michael. Hi, um, I'm Michael Friedrich, which is kind of hard to pronounce in, in English. I'm originally from Austria, living in uh, Nuremberg in, the, in Germany. I'm, I'm kind of like monitoring and observability addicted, um, which is my past, is my past in open source monitoring. And I do love CICD workshops, uh, meetups, everything around it. Um, I've joined in March, which is around about nine months now, but it still feels as if I would have been for a long time. Um, and I'm really enjoying hearing your questions and hearing your thoughts today. Um, should we do another introduction round, handing it over? Um, I think that's everyone. Um, so, I guess, you know, I think let's get started with the questions and then um, as people are verbalizing their questions, um, they can introduce themselves. I think that would be a great way to do it. So um, the first question was submitted by Pascal Kramer, who I'm not seeing um, on this call, but we'll answer the question anyway. And, and hopefully Pascal will tune into the uh, recording of this when it gets posted to YouTube. So Pascal asks, how can a, a set up an empty local repo uh, which will actually be created later on with sub modules already set up. How can, I think he meant, how can I set up uh, an empty local repo with sub modules already set up? Um, and Michael, it looked like you were answering that question in the doc. So you want to um, verbalize your response? Yeah, I just like peeked into that before and um, did some Google Googling and I kind of would do would solve it in the way of either using the REST API actions to create the project and later on import the submodules or go the way with using uh, project templates for groups and um, and other things. So this would be one thing and I can see that um, we probably should also be sharing the URLs and the links which I will be sharing in the chat. Oh, John is 
John is already copying it, so I haven't said anything. Um, but yeah, that's, that should be about it. And if not, I would recommend joining uh, the GitLab forum, which can be reached on forum.gitlab.com and just reach out and ask your question maybe there to, fi to find out more how our community members solve the problem. Um, but that's basically about it, how I would solve it. Thanks, Michael. Anyone else want to add anything before we open it up for questions? No, I like that idea. All right, cool. Um, well, thank you. So uh, moving on, does anyone on the call have a question they'd like to verbalize? Um, and you can, even if you don't have your camera on, you can just unmute yourself and, and ask your question. Um, uh, hi, my name's uh, not John, <laughs> it's Michelle. Uh, I've got a question around the uh, Kubernetes uh, agent you're working on. Uh, if you have more information about that, uh, general availability of it. Um, what is the idea behind it? Is it going to function as an operator really or? If you don't know anything about it, that's also fine. Or if you need to Google it. Yeah, no, I, I can uh, take that one. I was writing the question in the document, so I'll let John or someone else uh, write the answer. Yeah, so the Kubernetes agent um, in GitLab uh, is going to be, yes, a, like, a, like a full uh, agent um, that runs in your um, Kubernetes cluster and does kind of pull-based GitOps deployments. Um, and so it's actually based on the open source um, GitOps engine from the Argo project. Um, so it's the same underlying uh, engine uh, and then it's our operator on top of it basically, right? So like if you, I'm just gonna share some in chat here. Like this is the documentation for the GitLab uh, Kubernetes agent. And then this is the GitOps engine that's based off of. So if you look at that, basically the GitOps engine is what uh, underlies like Argo CD or Argo Flux. Um, it also is what underlies um, uh, the GitLab Kubernetes engine or agent. Um, so it's basically the same concept. You know, you can have a manifest repository that the agent's watching for changes and then it applies those changes uh, whenever there's there's an update to that, um, so, so that answers can, some of it. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for that. If I can add an additional question in that case, in the in GitLab EE in thirteen five at the moment, um, you have still this uh, option to activate actually the the Kubernetes user cluster. Um, will that disappear uh, and be replaced with a Kubernetes agent? Good question. Uh, I don't think I, it's going to disappear. I think the idea um, is that there are gonna be folks that wanna do kind of like a push-based uh, CD to Kubernetes. And that's what the original kind of Kubernetes integration, if you will, in GitLab where there's, you can like create a cluster or put the details of your cluster in. Um, that allows GitLab to push changes to your application into Kubernetes. Uh, the agent allows for the inverse, right? GitLab doesn't know anything about your cluster. There's an agent that's running inside your cluster that does know about GitLab that's pulling it for updates. Um, so I think as far as I know, and Michael or Abubakar, you can correct me if I'm wrong, the plan is to support both, right, going forward. Because there's some folks that like the idea of a push-based you know, CD deployment, some folks that like the idea of a, a pull-based uh, CD deployment. Um, we also have our, I see William hiding on our call, who's our GitOps expert on uh, our product marketing team. He can add anything that I've missed there. Yeah, he was spotted. <laughs> I think uh, I think you covered it quite well, Brendan. Yeah, thanks for joining, William. Sorry, I did, figured I'd I'd keep you let let you keep me honest. So if I can manipulate this conversation a bit more, um, sure. how far does your collaboration currently go with? Um, like uh, Kubernetes management tools such as Google Anthos, et cetera. Are you, gonna, are you working together with them? Because we hear some stuff, but <laughs> it's not, we, we don't hear the GitLab side. Sure, sure. Yeah, we have a great uh, relationship with the folks like uh, we at, at Google. Uh, Anthos is a great project. There's a lot of great um, 
uh, work being done there. I don't know a lot of the details of it. I do know that we have an integration directly with Anthos. Um, now you're hitting my depth of knowledge here. So again, I would um, encourage anyone from GitLab that knows more than me at this point to, um, to chime in. But I know that we're working directly with them on um, both an Anthos integration and then with our common customers um, you know, that have both Anthos and GitLab and how those two will work together. Um, I wish I could share more and I'm looking and Googling as I'm talking, but you found, so, you found Michelle, you dug to my depth. Good job. <laughs> so Michelle, first of all, thank you for all these great questions. Um, but if there was a specific kind of use case that you had in mind or a specific integration with Anthos, like a specific way that you're looking to use GitLab and Anthos together, um, if we're not able to answer the question on this call, we can definitely research it for you and follow up with you or um, you know, if you post, create a post on the forum, we can answer your question there. Um, but I'd love to just hear a little bit more about what you have in mind and that way we can uh, maybe hone in on an answer for you. Yeah, sure. I'll prepare something and uh, write it somewhere. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so, thanks so much. Anyone else on the call have a question? Yeah, I have also a question. Um, I have a question. Is there a plan for an official support of an CLI so that I can easily forward a repository through a CLI too? I think I can take that. Um, we do have, I think there's a lab CLI. We also have a, two other different projects in that area. We had ideas of integrating or like migrating the lab uh, CLI into our uh, workspace currently. So there's an open epic around that, um, which I need to Google now. Um, and the thing is, currently there's no work resources assigned to it. So we've been, we've been discussing it on the developer evangelism team to maybe take it over. And we are also in contact with uh, the ecosystem group, I think. Um, so the idea is there and I think the demand is also there, um, but currently um, it's kind of stuck in the migration of uh, the lab project from GitHub to GitLab into our organization and then like invite everyone to work on it. Um, but this is, I've just pasted the epic in the, in the chat. Um, this is something which we are currently discussing. Yeah, cool. Maybe maybe you can add your use case or your like feature requirements or your initial ideas to that, how you would solve it and things like that to maybe keep the discussion going again. That would be great. Yeah, I can do that because my main use case for that was because I used last week, I used for the first time the new GitHub CLI mostly. And they have a function that's called fork, like you can do directly a, a git fork and it will pull automatically also the upstream. So you have everything set it up with only one command. This is really quite a um, cool way of working as an open source developer that I can easily only fork the project directly and have directly connected the upstream. It will speed up a little bit the productivity. Does it um, support keeping your fork updated with the upstream yeah. main branch? Okay, that's yeah. interesting. Okay, thanks. Mm. Nicholas, have you looked at any of the open source um, CLI tools that are out there for GitLab? Uh, I only used, uh, as a lab, I used only one time. This like a year ago or something, right? Because for that, I, pro I need to program also a small tool for myself to um, doing the authentic automatically way to get a personal access token from the CLI. And for that, I looked into CLI tools, mostly they're written in a uh, Ruby and I don't know Ruby at all. So I can mostly read Ruby, but I can't write it or it takes too long. So I need to check if it's in another other program language. I found out that GLAB was currently out there and then I started to use it. But I think for that time they didn't uh, had my didn't had my problem mostly. Yeah. But it's a great way probably to contribute that to the um, GLAB tool. 
to see if it has this feature or um, I will check this out. Also. Cool, yeah, I just linked to GLab in the um, chat. Um, that might be something worth looking at. Ah, there are two tools out there because I used Lab. It's called only Lab. Yeah, there's Lab and there's GLab. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, this tool I didn't use, yeah. Lab was kind of inspired by like Hub. And I think Lab is in Ruby yeah. maybe, right? Is it? Lab, no, Lab is also in Go. Oh, Lab is, okay. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, I know GLab's in Go. Yeah. The tough well, part also about having an official Go. CLI is there's many. Yeah. All right, anyone else on the call have a question? So I would have a small one, um, same direction, but more the project management part. So is there anything planned to get an iOS or Android app for managing issues and stuff like this? So most of the time I'm seeing an issue update, I would like to update an issue, but I'm on my mobile phone and it would be nice to have a nice integrated app, mainly related to the project management topics. Any yeah. plant on this or sorts? <laughs> I don't, personally, I don't know of any plans, um, you know, for kind of an iOS or Android app, like um, coming, becoming available, you know, imminently. Um, I know it's something that the, you know, the community is interested in. Um, so it's, it's certainly something that we think about, but I don't think there's any kind of imminent plans for that, but I may be wrong. Anyone, any get levers want to correct me on that? No, I think you're correct. Um, I know it's been discussed before and hasn't been made a priority. I'm just trying to find that discussion. Uh, I'd love it too, but yeah, I, don't, I have not seen it actually happening. Okay, thanks. I've got okay. another question. If, uh, I'm not sure how far you follow topics around um, GitLab E and uh, Group Sync, uh, Azure AD integration, SSO. If you know anything about that topic, which has been, I think, open for like four years, <laughs> to be able to do that in GitLab E directly from Azure AD. This is doing Group Sync yeah. in CE, you mean, or? An EE. Oh, shoot. So, yeah, group sync is in EE. It's, it's specifically, do you have a link to the issue you're talking about? I, I'm, I'm not familiar with Yeah, I was searching for it as well, but I need to go back yeah. a lot of months. Uh. Yeah, so the, the issue is that group sync doesn't work in some cases. Is that what you're saying? Um, it's basically the to be able to integrate it with Azure AD, uh, which doesn't work. Gotcha. Um, and Azure AD doesn't expose itself as LDAP in any way? No. Ah, okay. Yeah. It, it, it uh, will be right for, for Active Directory or something or any anything LDAP based, but not for Azure AD. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, I'd have to see an issue on it to, to be sure. Oh, wow. Issue 118. That is the lowest issue number I've ever seen. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe this touches <laughs> it. I'm not sure about it. I just googled myself. Um, gotcha. I was just wondering whether the the Azure AD um, exposes itself as SAML SSO. Maybe. Um, oh yeah, I wonder if it does SAML. And maybe yeah. something with the group sync doesn't work in that regard. But to be honest, I have never used Azure um, AD or something in that regard. Yeah, I haven't either. That's why I'm. Michelle, have you ever looked into doing the SAML integration? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's that that that's fine. That that's works. what you're doing, just... but no group sync. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Group sync must be an LDAP only thing. Um, we can look into this more and get back to you. Um, right. uh, we'll get in touch with the product manager of that group. Um, but yeah, that's that's good to know. All right, cool. I'm going to pull a question um, from the doc um, that was submitted by uh, Ekan. They didn't give their full name. Um, 
but this one I'm going to direct towards Michael. Um, they were wondering how to run serverless applications on GitLab and Michael, you put an answer in there. You want to verbalize that? Yeah, of course. Um, I, to be honest, I also needed to research a little bit on that. Um, it's either you can use uh, Knative um, to run it on Kubernetes um, yourself, or you could be using AWS Lambda and integrate it. And there is a specific documentation around that. Um, full disclosure, I haven't tried it myself, um, but this could be something um, to have a look into it um, and should also support the way of either running your local uh, Kubernetes uh, cluster in your own DMZ environment or use a cloud provider. For Kubernetes, if I could provide some, some guides and demos. I know somebody who talked about it earlier. <laughs> I will share some links. Thanks, Nico. All right, so opening it back up to, to folks on the call. Anyone on the call have any um, questions they want to verbalize? Seems like some new folks have joined. I see some John Coglins at the bottom. All right, great. So then I'll, I'll go back to the list of questions that we received in advance. Tony um, Sobel asked, for those who are new or novice, what's a good way to learn more about GitLab? Um, Abu Bakr, do you have anything you want to add there? Yeah, I think we have a very great documentation uh, that breaks into administration and the uh, user manual. I think spending time on uh, the documentation is the best way to learn as much as you can about GitLab. That's if you want to use GitLab, but for GitLab as a company, you can learn as much as you can on our handbook. Yeah, great point about the handbook. Um, anyone else want to add to that? Other ways that folks that are just learning GitLab can um, learn quickly? I would probably add um, like joining our meetups and doing uh, regular like CI CD workshops or trying things out together. Um, and have a peek into um, our learning platform, which also showcases how features work, how you can probably solve your use case um, and maybe let yourself inspire you by kind of saying, hey, I want to like uh, automatically test my Node.js application. How does it work? How others are solving it? Um, probably there's already a blog post around it or DevTU um, resource or something else. Um, other than that, if you happen to have anything which will say, I don't know how to, to go any further, um, just pull us in on, on either on social media or even better on, on the forum and just go ahead asking a question and um, what I think. I want to solve like this problem or maybe I have this pro uh, project. Sometimes it's also like learning Git because Git as uh, a foundation of interacting with the GitLab server is also something to, to be aware of. Um, yeah, but I would say try it out. Um, and if there are questions, we're here for you. One thing I would like to add also is uh, most times we tend to forget the GitLab YouTube channel and the unfiltered uh, channel. There's a treasure trove of uh, lots of videos that have been recorded about a lot of things. I think almost every day new videos are uploaded to the unfiltered channel. You can get very good videos that you can watch on about different aspects of GitLab there also. William, do you have anything you want to recommend? Uh, just that I've seen the uh, links in chat for the learn section of the website. Um, and just uh, something that I've seen that's very exciting is, is content that doesn't even come out of uh, GitLab, but there are a lot of third parties that will do um, how to learn GitLab and uh, just other folks in the community that are not GitLab team members, but they're excited about GitLab and they'll put you know, video series on YouTube. The one thing I probably 
would recommend is to try to find the latest video you can. So there might be a really amazing series that's really well done, terrific communicator. Uh, it's probably Brendan, but he probably made the video like three years ago. And GitLab changes so quickly that um, you can get really confused. In fact, I literally got an email two days ago from somebody who watched one of my videos on using um, epics and milestones. And they emailed me and they said, hey, I love your videos on epics and milestones. What about iterations? because iterations were shipped like right after I did the video. So like immediately my video is out of date. Uh, so even though there's a lot of really good content out there with like that's well communicated, I probably would give the nod towards whatever you can find that's the newest or the freshest uh, because GitLab changes so quickly that even a video that's a few months old um, might already be pretty meaningfully out of date because there's some new feature that, you know, the UI's changed or it's usurped. And, um, so exciting part about GitLab, we keep on adding new things very, very quickly, but that's the tough part is, is uh, finding, creating how-to content. It just goes out of date so quickly. Thanks, William. And yeah. then lastly, oh, oh can I ahead. add one more thing? Sorry. I was just going to add like, once you're past like that new novice thing, like, like Michael said, learning Git can be a big thing. Um, it, it's going to sound really silly, but like the fact that all of these things are out there that we talked about, right? Abubakar talked about the handbook, Michael talked about uh, the documentation, or Abubakar talked about that, and William talked about the videos, right? Like the fact that all that's out there and GitLab's open with all that means Google is actually a fantastic like index of how to learn GitLab. Like any time I, I just like, I have professional Googler, Googler as a sticker on my laptop and like, it's not that wrong. <laughs> like, a significant portion of my job, even though I know GitLab really well, is like Googling for answers like I'm doing right now. So don't be afraid to ask Google what you think might be a silly question because the fact that there's so much out there probably means you'll get you'll get the answer. Um, so in a not like uh, condescending way, try Google. Like it's really good because there's so much out there. Yep, great recommendation. Um, and thanks everyone else who, who answered. I just wanted to quickly open that one up to the floor and see if folks um, who are on the call and um, you know GitLab users, it seems like we have a lot of folks who are um, have a really strong kind of understanding of GitLab. Um, do you have anything you want to add, Michelle or Nico? Yeah, I was waiting for that one. Um, yeah, sure. Um, depending on where the user comes from, I would say, first of all, if you have a, a free instance or something installed, if a basic version, uh, click everywhere, depending on the permissions, whether this person is an admin or not, of course. Um, if you have the possibility to be added as an admin to click around even further, do that. Personally, I think um, you're all referring to other documents, etc. do Google. I think GitLab, the docs.gitlab.com is extremely complete. Still things to, to correct. But I think that is a really good starting point to get the basic information of you might get some idea and really start searching into it. Uh, you get all the steps, basically. Um, some things might not be completely 100% correct, but that's when you get into the installation configuration level. You might have some additional questions about what certain rate commands may do or something. That's really the, I would say, the deep level. Um, Basic permissions are all, always very important to read about what the dashboard does, different uh, scopes one can have. Um, so yeah, I would, I would refer back to the GitLab docs to get started and, and click around, see how much you can do. Thanks, yeah, great, great advice there. All right, if no one else um, wants to jump in, we can open it back up for, for the next question. Where can we get the GitLab t-shirt? <laughs> we have a, um, I'll take this one. We have a shop.gitlab.com where you can go and pick out um, you know, your favorite swag. Um, we also have a great program for our most active community members, people that contribute either code or write blog posts to tech talks um, about GitLab organized meetups. Uh, it's called the GitLab Heroes program. Um, I run that program and I think the t-shirts are awesome. It's, a, it's even 
harder to get than just your standard GitLab Tanuki shirt. Um, so I'd recommend checking that out. It's called GitLab Heroes. Um, and then also we have a uh, GitLab Community Day coming up on December 1st. If you're part of the GitLab Virtual Meetups group, you'll be able to, to find it there. If not, um, search for GitLab Virtual Meetups on meetup.com and you'll find the group. And everyone who participates um, in that event will be getting um, some special swag. I can't say what that swag is yet, but um, I think it's gonna be pretty cool. Um, so that would be my recommendation. If you're feeling super urgent, check out shop.gitlab.com. And if you'd, um, if you'd rather earn it, um, check out GitLab Heroes or, or join the community day on December 1st. Um, so moving on to the next question, we received a question from Bill uh, Bengo, um, who, who pre-submitted, I don't, I don't see Bill on the call. Bill wants to know, is GitLab open source? Brendan, you wanna take that one? Sure, uh, that's a great question. Uh, the simple answer is yes. Uh, the detailed answer is a little more complex. I would say that the correct definition of GitLab is it's an open core product. Uh, and so what that means is it's, um, there is a completely open source, fully uh, free and open source version of GitLab. Uh, we call that distribution GitLab CE for community edition. That's licensed under an MIT license, I believe, I think, um, fully open source. And then GitLab Incorporated, the company, uh, also releases what we call the GitLab EE distribution for enterprise. Uh, and that is a source available proprietary version. So we take the, the, the open source version of GitLab, the CE, uh, uh, addition, if you will. Uh, we call that the core of GitLab because it's, it's you know, kind of in both. And then we add on uh, features that are proprietary to GitLab Incorporated on, on top of that. Uh, and that's what we sell to uh, enterprises and other customers um, is that proprietary version of GitLab. Now, the interesting thing about it is it's also source available. So the full source uh, of that product Right, that additional code that we add to GitLab core uh, is also available. So we have customers that, that uh, contribute to that, although it's not technically open source in the sense that it's not free, it's, it's part of what we sell. Uh, so that's a super detailed answer to a question that could just be answered yes. <laughs> if I can jump in with one other component, uh, I think that was a great overview. And I'll just mention that even though there are different distributions uh, the source code is now just in one uh, GitLab source code repository. So it used to be two different repositories for, uh, there was a CE repository and there's an EE repository. Now it's all just in a GitLab code repository, all of the code. And the proprietary code is in a different folder. Uh, and then the other component is even if you use the EE distribution, if you download and install that, you can use that without a paid license. You can use that free of charge. So with open source, you have uh, things that are free, free of cost, but also things that are free, free to use, and also things that are free in terms of uh, you can contribute and extend them. And that uh, those attributes of open source also apply to our, our proprietary code because you can download it, you can use it free of cost, and it gives you access to all of the same features that would be in the community edition distro. And the advantage there is if you start out with a community edition distro, and you decide that you want to upgrade and use some of the paid features, you have to do a complete migration where you have to switch to a different code base. Whereas if you just start out with the EE distribution, you can use it without a license, everything just works. And if at some point in the future, you decide you want to add some paid features, it's as simple as adding a license key and all of a sudden those things are unlocked. So it's a, just a thought I'd jump in to share just a bit extra there. Yeah, yeah, thanks William. It's nuanced, but it's important. I would also, um, add one more link uh, or thought here, which is our um, stewardship of the open source pro project is something we take really seriously. Uh, there's a stewardship page. I think it's, don't quote me about .gitlab.com slash stewardship. I'll put the link in, in the doc. Um, and uh, it's something we take really seriously. Um, it, it's uh, important. There's a, there's a lot that we've done to talk about the viability of open source and the sustainability of open source and open core models and how they work. 
Um, and there's also a process by which things get moved down uh, from our proprietary distribution into our open source distribution. So recently we announced, this was a couple months ago, that like 18 things that we had developed as proprietary code, uh, we were actually moving into the open source version. And the reason for that is we have a very specific way of defining what should go in the proprietary version. Uh, and that should be things that, you know, enterprises that can and should pay for the software they use uh, will value and, and the buyers of that will value. And so we try to make sure that things that, you know, developers need and want uh, get into or start in the open source version. So that's something that's pretty unique. You don't see a lot of open source companies, uh, you know, moving stuff out of their proprietary version into open source willingly, uh, but we're doing it all the time. I love it. Thanks for the great detail, uh, Brendan and William. What could have been a one word answer, I feel like just became um, a really detailed explanation, which is great uh, for folks that are just kind of getting up to speed on some of these different um, terms. And um, William, thanks for pointing out the, the different kind of distributions being available as a single repo and the benefits to installing EE um, when you're just getting started. So I just wanted to open it up um, one more time. We have one more question on the doc. Um, and so I wanted to give folks in the room a chance to ask a question. You can do it you know, by verbalizing. You can ask your questions in the chat if that's better for you. Um, so I'll keep an eye on that and I don't see anyone unmuting. So I'll ask this last question and then we'll, we'll see who um, from the room wants to ask the next question. Um, so this one's kind of open-ended. Alberto Vicente just asked CICD question mark. Um, but I wanted to ask this question because we've been talking so much about GitLab CI recently um, on our team. I just wanted to see, you know, kind of what's top of mind for folks on our team um, when they're thinking about GitLab CI. Um, so we could go around. I don't know if Michael, you want to start this one off? Sure, but expect a long brain dump. I'm trying to keep it short. Um, I think one one of the things which attracted me some years ago to, to CI or GitLab CI CD in, in general um, was an easy way to run unit tests and immediately get the feedback inside an issue or a merge request. Um, and ever since then, I've been using it in a way or trying to use it in a way of um, building binary packages, making it easier to use software. Um, yeah, making my, my life easier as a developer um, and also like preparing our community or someone who wants to try out my my cool open source project or something like that um, make, and making things easier like creating an RPM package, uh, creating a Debian package, um, adopting how to use Docker for, for instance, because previously I wasn't sure how to really use it in my environment. With GitLab CI, it's just, oh, it's Docker, it's in a sandbox, it always is the same. I don't really care how it works. It just works. And at a certain level, I I also need to like look into how to create my own images, um, but still everything is integrated smoothly. And this is what I kind of like the most, how it, how it works and how, how easy it is to like write um, a short configuration and have everything tested. Anyone else want to add to that? Abu Bakr, I see you just came off mute. Yeah, I think I will summarize everything into the word automation. The possibilities are limitless, right from getting your code from idea to production to GitOps, where you can literally go from zero to a uh, full-fledged production and a production testing staging environment just from a single push or a merge. So CICD, makes possible almost anything you can imagine with your code and uh, uh, how you want your infrastructure or whatever it is that you're doing to be done. I think I've seen people who even do IoT using CICD, push some scripts, it gets deployed, it activates some things and some actions are performed. So the possibilities are limitless and it's mostly around automation. Yeah, and I'll just add, John, uh, in your silence uh, while you're typing the answer, which is awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, 
I like Michael CI is kind of what brought me to get well my I came to GitLab as a customer two ways. One, I came to GitLab.com as a customer because I was paying GitHub for private repositories for a company that wasn't making any money. Uh, and GitLab at the time had private repositories. And that got, brought me to GitLab.com. But then at a job I was working, I inherited like, um, like your traditional stack. Like it was Jira to GitLab to Jenkins to Nexus and Artifactory for some reason, no one could ever explain to me why we had both. Um, and like CI was the thing that really like clinched GitLab for me, um, both as like a, just a personal hobbyist user and as a professional trying to make things work. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of it you could say is, is you could say, well, GitLab is really great. And the GitLab runner was such a great invention by Camille. It was actually an open source um, contribution. But the real thing is like, I think, you know, also the timing of when GitLab CI came to market, right? It came to market at a time when, you know, Docker had kind of won. And, you know, we were entering this world where everyone understood the, the value of containerizing things and making, you know, the tools very explicit uh, that are in a container, et cetera. And like that ability to just select a container and start building your code, you know, and on GitLab.com, you can do it for free with, with nothing. Um, really is like kind of earth shattering when you've been spending years trying to struggle with getting the right version of Java on the right server so that you can actually get the build to pass, um, uh, which was a world that I was in before GitLab CI versus just letting your developers say, hey, start from this image and then build. Um, so if you ask me CI CD question mark, that's the answer you'll get from, from me. Great, thanks everyone. And William, just in case you have anything you want to add, I want to give you a chance to contribute. I, I just appreciate y'all let me uh, crash the column. I'm not on John's team, but uh, I love everything that John's team does. So uh, I'm over on the product marketing team and I just have appreciated enjoying the, the conversation here. And uh, I'm excited that uh, KubeCon is going on. It's my favorite time of year. All right, so we have one last question in the chat from, of course, it came from John Coggle. And uh, for folks that are watching this later, there was some kind of Zoom bug where everyone, not everyone, but many of the people who are joining the room had my name as their display name. So I'm sorry to whoever submitted this question that your name, you're not getting credit for it, but I do appreciate the question. Um, and I think it's a great kind of way to wrap things up because um, we're just about out of time. So the question is, and I'll verbalize it since I'm the real John Coggle. Uh, what do you feel is the most unappreciated useful feature of GitLab? Um, and if anyone, you know, it doesn't have to be folks on my team. If there's anyone who's, um, you know, just a, a GitLab community member who wants to um, shout out their favorite unappreciated useful feature, feel free to do that. Um, so I'll see who wants to unmute first and share their favorite feature. Well, for my part, I would say, but I think it's not being um, publicized enough, probably, is the possibilities you get additionally with um, uh, GitLab Geo for the replication. So if you have uh, locations then uh, all over the world, it can, uh, can be uh, quite helpful. Great, uh, great suggestion. Anyone else? I see Nicholas is unmuted. I would say um, mostly the GitLab CI YAML. So literally um, when GitLab came out, it was the first direction into, hey, we write our whole CI CD pipeline in a declarative way. So that means now currently some YAMLs could be explored right now because we can include other YAMLs, we can do referencing, we can do a lot of weird stuff, but in the end it works. So this is a really great and, and it's versioned. So this is the most sufficient way that I saw in terms of doing CI CD because before that time it was mostly a paid. So someone clicks on the UI and then the magic happens. And this is not a good way to go and also not to scale. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would say, and this reminds me of a, of a discussion I had with Brandon last year, I think. 
so when I was not working at GitLab, but Brandon did, um, the the issue actions, or you de, you defining an uh, issue template or merge request template, and then you define the actions like assign the issue, set the labels, do some other magic stuff. Um, this is something this is documented, um, but I didn't I was not aware of that. Right now I'm using it on a daily basis because my workflows are speedy and like when when someone requests our resources or something else, it's super convenient. Um, but I think not many not many users are aware of that that this even exists and how how easy and how smooth this this can go in combination uh, with uh, issue templates and merge request templates. I would say hi from my side. <laughs> um, I would say GitLab CI uh, parent child pipelines is a really underestimated uh, underestimated feature because it pops up roughly six to twelve months ago. I did uh, I found it and. Nowadays, I do everything with parent-child pipelines because you can squeeze out so much of your CI, which you never expected before. Because if your projects get bigger or you want more efficiency, um, parent-child pipelines are a really awesome feature, which is not really discover able in the beginning when you start with GitLab CI. Great, uh, thank you. Thanks for contributing to the conversation, Michael and Michael. Anyone else want to go? I want to add um, service desk. I think uh, most people don't, uh, you don't hear service desk being mentioned quite often and it's quite a great tool to for users or customers or whoever is it of your projects to be able to submit bug requests or anything without having to create an account on GitLab or your own uh, private instance. Yep, we use that for a lot of our community programs. Yeah, I, I have two. One, I think is just the, the package registry in general. Um, like I said, that stack that I had before, um, I was able to start to replace everything with GitLab except for at the time, uh, like Artifactory. Uh, and I think the ability to replace that and, and proxy um, other package repositories and like actually store your own libraries as packages is going to be a really huge uh, game changer as folks like try this, you know, microservices world and, and inner sourcing and all this other stuff that sounds really great, but then you have to go make work in practice. Uh, I think the package registry is an underappreciated useful feature in that world. Uh, and then another one, um, I've got a shout out to one that uh, I was part of, which I don't even know if people will know exists. It's a thing called visual review apps. Like raise your hand if you knew, know what a visual review app is. Awesome, this is great. Okay, so the idea of a visual review app is you can integrate a little bit of JavaScript code into your actual app. And then when you're running a review app, you can look at the app itself, right? We all know, many of us know about that, right? GitLab spins up a review app automatically. It's great. Um, and that's awesome. But with visual review apps, you can actually then make comments about it directly from the app, right? Without having to like switch between the merge request and the app itself. Um, so yeah, it's it's kind of a little cool, uh, very underutilized and appreciated feature. Uh, it's from one of uh, my favorite senior developers uh, at GitLab, uh, and I would love pe more people to use it than, than do today. Awesome. Yeah, and I'll just give a quick sh shout out to our analytics um, there's lots of cool analytics that you can look at for different, you know, groups and repos. Um, and it gives you some great insight, at least when your, you know, project is at a certain scale, um, to just like the activity that's going on and, um, how many merge requests are being merged or issues are being open. And you can just kind of keep an eye on, um, you know, the activity in your project and it's really cool visualizations in there. Um, so that brings us to basically the end of our time. Um, I thought, I see, I just want to make sure. 
All right, so there's no new questions in the chat except for Brendan's asking Michelle something, but they can follow up um, there. So yeah, I just wanted to say, you know, thanks so much everyone for participating today. This is our first time doing this and it went much better than I was expecting to be honest, although maybe my expectations were a little low. Um, I really appreciate, you know, everyone who contributed to the conversation um thanks for all the interesting questions and interesting answers that you provided um it was great to have um uh, you know community member participation on the call so it wasn't just us talking um to ourselves or, to, or talking at you the whole time um and yeah i hope everyone enjoys the rest of kubecon if you're participating um and i would encourage you to check out our gitlab virtual meetups group um, and stay connected for future uh virtual events with the the community because um, we, we're planning some fun stuff for December and um, hoping to start off next year with a bang too. So um, stay tuned for all that. And thanks so much again and, and have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Take care. Bye-bye. Yep. Thanks. Right. Bye. Bye.